The ugliest ones are the most nutritious. Eat your heart out, boo-boo. Oh my god, those. She's just juicy. How to actually say cacao. Vlog. You think solar power is the new energy source? Biz, look at this. I could fuel this entire house. I'm just kidding. Hi, welcome back to today's vlog. So I'm excited because today I'm in the mood for something different. I'm in the nude for something a little spicy. I'm in the mood for new year, new me. Health is wealth. Hashtag rise and grind. Hashtag fitness. Rise and shine, boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> Today, in honor of New Year New Me, I've decided to do an updated what I eat in a day video. I feel like I don't do a lot of these. These are one of my most requested videos on both channels. And I just, I feel like what I eat in a day changes. It's, this video is confusing to me because I don't normally eat the same things for every meal of every day. And I'm sure most people don't. So I guess it's just like a generic overview. So I'm going to give you guys an overview of what I like to eat. And this is drastically different from my last one because this year I have taken it upon myself because we just moved in and this place is much, much further away from Asian markets. And so I don't really get to eat a lot of like Asian food. I don't really get to go to a lot of like authentic Asian restaurants on my downtime. Like if I'm just craving a light dinner and we go out to eat, it's probably not gonna be a Korean restaurant that's authentic because there's not a lot nearby, et cetera, et cetera. We're a little far from K-Town. I've decided that I really, really, really wanna cook more this year. And I wanna cook more like Korean recipes. I feel like I miss Korean food. We're gonna be doing a what I eat in a day update plus some easy Korean recipes. First thing when I wake up, I always brush my teeth. While I'm getting ready, I try to finish an entire bottle of Essential right when I wake up. And I don't know if this is, I know there's a lot of different pH brands. This was a brand that my doctor recommended and he recommended pH water. I really don't know, but I don't know if it's in my head, but I do feel like I feel a difference if I have some pH water throughout the day versus not having any. I don't know if it really is a thing. And then afterwards, I usually follow up with a some sort of like electrolyte something. It could be coconut water, it could literally be a Gatorade but typically I like to go with the harmless coconut water all I'm trying to say is drink water in the morning that's all I do okay and then I take a probiotic <laughs> and I have been taking probiotics for years now and I feel like it helps I feel like it helps with indigestion I feel like everything just goes in a lot more smooth like everything's just a little bit more like more like goes out a little smooth. <laughs> <laughs> like what I would kind of call a probiotic is like well, I don't know anything, but the way that I feel personally after years of taking it is it's like the oil to your car. All I'm trying to say is stay hydrated in the morning because you get dehydrated throughout the day and maybe track your water, maybe track your hydration. How do you do that, you ask? Everyone's like, nobody asked. <laughs> it's through LifeSum because today's video is sponsored by LifeSum and if you guys don't know, I've been working with LifeSum for quite some time now. LifeSum is a nutrition focused app and they help track, track your health. My earring just dropped. She's like, that is too good. They track your health by logging your, your calorie intake, your meals, your water intake, and your exercise. I use LifeSum because it's so pretty and because Aww. the app is so cute. All of that is very true, but the main reason that I use LifeSum is because throughout the years, I've used so many different variations of like nutrition-focused apps, calorie counting apps. It has been so difficult to find an app that is able to track calories that are a little bit abnormal. So if you guys eat a lot of Asian food or if you cook a lot at home, honestly, I would say that LifeSum is the easiest way to track at home cooked meals. If you guys download the app, it's completely free to download. I like to use the premium version because they give you a lot more options, a lot more recipes, but you essentially set your goals, whether it's maintaining your health, getting more exercise, healthier eating, or gaining weight, losing weight, whatever it may be, you put in your goal and it'll give you a lot of helpful tips. It'll help you track your macros. And it also gives you like a daily goal to reach. So that's like kind of like giving you a target to hit. So you're not just like mindlessly like, I kind of want to diet, but like how, you know? And they also have really cool meal plans for like intermittent fasting, clean eating, vegan recipes, high protein recipes, keto recipes. And in honor of New Year 2020, Lysum has released two different diet plans that last a week, which I'm really interested in doing. I'm 
I'm thinking of maybe sending my fiance to do one of them, which the first one what? is a pay. <laughs> so the first one is a paleo diet plan, which is one week of free, unprocessed, whole, like clean food, nutritious foods for one week. And they give you like the recipes, they give you a, a meal plan, a shopping list to make it a no brainer when you go to the grocery store. And then the other plan that they have is a one week sugar free diet, which I read so much up on it because I saw it and I was like, okay, that's interesting, but like, why do I want to go without sugar? But apparently, it's not supposed to be like a lifelong thing where you just don't eat sugar for the rest of your life. But mm -hmm. one week is a good enough time to reset your body and cleanse it from like the holidays or anything. And so I heard a lot of people start the new year with stuff like that. I'm gonna be checking my food throughout the day because that's usually what I do when I'm not filming my mukbangs and I do sometimes track my mukbang food. But I'm gonna be tracking my meals throughout the day so you guys will see how life sum works. But make sure to check out the links in the description because I have a discount code for you guys to get the premium version which I like to use. They have a lot more recipes or you guys can download the free app. Thank you life sum for sponsoring today's video and now let's make some breakfast. This is breakfast. Breakfast is weird. We do different types of breakfast. Sometimes if we're really, really busy or I'm really, really lazy, <laughs> probably the latter one, we'll sometimes go out to grab breakfast or get breakfast like to go. But usually when we're eating at home, it's something along the lines of like toast, avocado toast, which is so basic. Or we do something like, like an acai bowl or we do some sort of yogurt. My fiance likes yogurt. I'm trying to get more into yogurt. I, I have on and off phases with yogurt. And right now I'm kind of an on on phase. And so I have so much yogurt in the fridge. I have some blackberries. We're gonna rinse that. We also have this activated superfood cereal. I don't know. It says cacao crunch. Please leave it in the comments how to actually say cacao. <laughs> that is not it. So I like to eat baby yogurt. I don't know if that's okay. <laughs> this is not a health advice. My favorite is this one. It's called Stonyfield and it's a yo baby. Yo baby. Yo baby. Yo baby, you wanna holla? Cacao. <laughs> I like to eat baby yogurt. I don't know why. It tastes better. And so we're gonna wash the blackberries and make a very light breakfast. I have a very exciting Korean recipe for lunch. Literally the ugliest bowl you've ever seen in your entire life. But you know what? She is nutritious. Okay, sometimes the ugliest ones are the most nutritious. Eat your heart out, boo boo. Thank you, thank to you To be so honest, much. it's not incredibly appetizing, but I think it's a good way to start mm. breakfast. It's very fresh. I'm actually gonna think about going outside and eating it because it's such a sunny day and <laughs> I will probably vlog if I snack or maybe lunch. Also, I mean, I feel like people are gonna ask to show my failures up close, so here it goes. Um, <laughs> I have the blueberry yogurt, I have the cacao. <laughs> so I have the blackberries, the blueberries, the banana, the kiwi, the fruit. To be honest, I'm gonna be 100% with you guys. Usually we'll just wash a bunch of fruit, put them on a plate, and then eat yogurt out of the yogurt container, but I was really trying to do the most for today's video. And now lesson learned. For lunch and for dinner, I will not be doing this wannabe Instagrammer, food pick, blogger, food beast. You guys know I'm not a vegan, but there's a lot of vegan stuff that actually tastes delicious. better than the non-vegan, like all of Abe's the vegan pound cake, all of these. Vegan kimchi tastes amazing. We really only like vegan cream cheese, it's so good. Uh, my favorite good culture cottage cheese has been discontinued for so long from every single store that I went to that carries this brand. It's the olive one, it tastes so good, but they don't have it and I can't find any olive flavored cottage cheese anywhere else. Okay, I'll explain when we get home, but these shirataki noodles are so, so good. POV, you are my fiance's phone and this is him trying to use Apple Pay to order something online. <laughs> you gotta do that. Whenever I lay down, this phone doesn't recognize me. Oh my god, yeah. He gets so angry. So now we're just gonna go into making some side dishes for the lunch period because I feel like maybe we'll eat and maybe, I wanna say like an hour from now, but prior to doing that, I wanna make this because sometimes you have to make a cucumber kimchi like maybe an hour before you eat it. Like it's not like that fresh kimchi where you just, honestly, it's preferable if you make it a couple hours ahead of time, but that's just a lot of planning to do. So I've got about seven, Persian cucumbers, three green onions, and a whole onion, and some other things. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is chop your cucumber into thinly sliced, like, julienne pieces. But I like it kind of like wide chunks, you know what I mean? Like that much? 
That is, is really that normal? chunky. Is it normal? Um, let is me it okay? taste it. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna need a wow. bowl, and you're gonna throw all of them into the bowl. Let me give you some cucumbers so that you learn how to cut cucumbers. <laughs> honey, 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 I need you to not aggress it. Not everything is a competition. It is, Life though. is not about speed. Life, Life is, is about enjoying the process. Smelling the flowers, the roses. Done, more. Honey. Here's an important tip from the lawyer. His mom was telling us that the lawyer said when you write 2020, so you know how like in 2019, even 2007, you write, for example, January 12th, that's my sister's birthday, January 12th, 2007, right? You write one slash, if you live in America, one slash, 12 slash 07, right? Yeah. Or 1 slash 12 slash 19. Yes. Right, right, right. Why am I making it so much more complicated? I don't know. <laughs> but in 2020, you have to write the full 2020 because if you think about it, let's say you write 1 slash 12 slash 20, right? Uh -huh. So it's you're writing January 12, 2020. But anyone could go in and try to replicate your handwriting and write like, 21. They can just add a two number behind 20. Yeah. And turn it into a different year. And that'll be the future. Yes. So they could literally turn your 20 into. <laughs> into. Yes. 2031. And why would anybody do that? Because they're fraudulent. What are they trying to get out Scammers. of it? Scammers. Expiration dates. Like, let's say you try to divorce me. And I say, uh uh, not today, bitch. I go in with a little marker and he wrote 2020. Then I could go in and I could write. 2099 99. and mm. then I'll say, where's my alimony pay up? And mm. that's what you call a 2020 fraud. Now you're gonna thinly mince three green onions, okay? So just cut off, I like to have a lot of the white parts in, but it's up to you. So you cut that, I will thinly chop what the entire doing, onion. Then? She's shredding okay, it into them. very, very thin slices. And then we put in the green onion. Honey, you sure? you're literally <laughs> just, <Can I> <laughs> Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. Because I'm so beautiful. Do you guys cry when you're wearing contacts and you chop onions? I never cry, but like if I'm not wearing contacts and if I wear glasses, I always cry. That's pretty much it. That's it. I mean, we just have to season it. The seasonings are super easy here. From here, you wanna go in with about three teaspoons of sugar. Mm -hmm. One, two, oh three. Six teaspoons of sesame seeds. One, two, three, six. And six teaspoons of red pepper flakes. This is gonna be linked below. Do you think like 90% of Korean dish comes with red pepper flakes? Yeah. Six teaspoons of sesame oil. And you're gonna need about five teaspoons of soy, tablespoons of soy sauce. I bought liquid aminos, which is supposed to be a healthier alternative to soy sauce, and he hates it. I can't taste the difference. Six cloves of garlic minced. So for that, I'm just gonna do maybe like one and a half. Grab a glove and let's start mixing. It smells so good. So it looks kind of dry now. It's because cucumbers have a lot of water in them. So over time when you put it into a container, even for like an hour, the cucumbers, all that water, that juice is gonna come out. I might have overdone it with the onion. Once again. Need to get out, <laughs> Honey, you are such a little princess today. He's literally sitting on the couch like, the onions made me cry, take the onions out. Mm. Let me try the onion. Mmm, that is so good. Another thing is that you don't have to wait as long. Like regular kimchi, you have to wait for it to ferment. It's just a whole day process. This, I usually, I even, like I would eat it right now, but I wanted to make it a little bit in advance. Just grab a little grass, 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 grass container. So this should last us, I mean, depending on how much we eat at home, this, if we don't eat out or anything, this should last us like. Like three days. That's a quick recipe. Mm-hmm. And then probably do a late lunch in like an hour. I'm gonna put this off to the side and I'll show you guys. Do you put so it in the right fridge now, or leave it outside? I put it in the fridge. Finally, still somewhat bright outside in time for lunch. I feel like all of our lunches have been feeling like dinners because it gets so dark outside so quick. You know, I saw a lot of comments that said daylight savings times is impertinent to the story, pertinent to our life. 
but I just don't see it. I don't know why we can't do daylight savings the opposite way, where we actually get more time in the winter instead of shortening it up. Like, why do they want it to be darker in the winter? That's is that how it is? It is. So, for lunch, I'm gonna be making something that I love making these days. Okay, here's the thing. My mom likes to make PB noodles. PB noodles is a Korean kimchi type esque thin wheat noodles, which are really, really good. But the way that my mom makes it, she has like this sauce from H Mart that she really, really likes using, and it's delicious. But I decided to put a little tweak on it, and I'm also gonna be trying a recipe that I found online so that you guys can actually find like the ingredients at probably your local Ralph's, Whole Foods, probably a world market. When I'm not filming mukbang, I like to replace almost all of my noodle intake into sheer talking noodles. <laughs> I feel like this isn't necessary to do unless you're really, really crazy about not eating noodles or you eat a lot of noodles. So once in a while, you want to take a break. But it's supposed to be zero calories, zero total fat, zero sugar. So apparently, it's good for you. It's way better than noodles. Okay, I was gonna freaking vlog this, but I can't because I can't pick it up with one hand. Hold on. Apparently, this is how you get the best boiled eggs. We're gonna. Who the f do I think I am right now? There's one, two. Start the timer. The first step, we're gonna rinse the toppings. I have two hard boiled eggs that I just put into an ice bath, which this is the first time I'm doing this for the purpose of today's video. I'm trying to be super fancy for you guys. And then I'm gonna slice up one Persian cucumber and wash up these broccoli sprouts. And that's the topping. And then we're gonna make the inside. You're gonna need one to two teaspoons of vinegar. I like to use rice vinegar, and I'm gonna go in with maybe one and a half, because I like it a little more vinegary. Two teaspoons of sesame oil. One tablespoon of sesame seeds, apparently. That's a lot. And then one teaspoon of sugar, which has sesame oil all over it, so I'm just gonna do it like that. One fourth cup of the red pepper paste, but I feel like that's a lot, so I'm gonna do a little less. And then you're gonna chop up one clove of onion minced and then add in some chopped kimchi, maybe about half a cup of this, and some kimchi juice. I personally wanted a lot more kimchi juice, but I feel like I can't squeeze that out without making it super unsanitary. So you're just gonna mix your sauce together and then throw in your shirataki noodles. This is where you have to be a lot more gentle than your regular noodles because shirataki noodles, they do not hold up as well. So mix it super, super gently. Again, you can just use regular noodles for this. Oh my gosh. Do you see that? Hey, it's a little too yolky. Oh my gosh, delicious. Wow, I mean I did, <gasps> wow, 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 wow! Sorry. Oh my god, I mean, she's just juicy and nothing can control her. I feel like this time I really put in the work. Usually it's never made this well done. It's just like mashing things together. But I wanted you guys to get like what it would be like if you actually followed the recipe, you know? Tarmakesmida. So there's cucumbers, broccoli sprouts, the seaweed. Mm -hmm. A little fresh. spicy. Wow, super fresh. Oh my god, that egg sold it for wow. me. You can't even taste it's not noodles, right? I swear. Shirataki noodles are some of my favorite. It's spicy though. Oh wow. That egg is the best thing I've ever done in my life. I don't even know what to say. Okay, we're gonna eat lunch and I'll show you guys if I have any snacks. But dinner should probably be probably a little bit more than what lunch is. I'll be back. I'm in the ghetto. Two things. First of all, I have been spending way too much time laughing at World War III memes, and then it's gonna freaking happen, and then I'm gonna realize that was not a laughing matter. But you know what? I googled it, and apparently it's like slim to none chance that World War III is gonna happen, and then suddenly this video does not age well. <laughs> Literally on TikTok, that is the only thing you can find right now, which is nuts. It's freaking marbles. But also I found this meme. Tell me if you feel the same way. Why is it that moms, every time you show them something on the internet, they always say, who's that? <laughs> 
I asked that too. <laughs> a really really late dinner because I just got really distracted with doing some edits, doing some of this, doing some of that, honestly just laughing at memes. <laughs> and I decided, you know what, I made lunch, I made breakfast, what did you do today? <laughs> Other than everything I didn't do. What did you do today, huh? I don't know, I just f***ed around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm gonna sit there and tell my fiance how to make dinner and then he's gonna make dinner. What? So this entire video, I've been telling them how to make something. But how do I know that they're gonna make it accurately by my directions? What if my directions suck? This way, I'll know exactly if my directions are successful or not because if you succeed at making the dinner, then I'm really good at instructing you on how to make dinner. You need tofu, you need kimchi, you need onion, ginger, garlic, yes, ginger. Some gochujang in there, that's it. Now cut the kimchi into bite-sized pieces as well as the green onions. Don't mince them, but make them like, you know what I'm talking about. Not really. You're gonna boil four cups of water and then you're gonna cut this firm tofu into half after you drain it and throw it in there and boil it for five minutes. So if you guys want, you guys can actually, like my mom, I believe she just fries the tofu, but I like my tofu a little bit more soft and kind of more rice-like. If you fry it, it's a completely different taste in my mind. And when I say fry, I mean pan fry. So you just put some like olive oil and then pan fry it. Don't like deep fry tofu. I mean, I guess you could. Uh, am I cooking it? Yeah, you're gonna fry it up with the kimchi. Slice up like a cup or two of kimchi into bite-sized pieces. So all of it? Yeah. Is this Size pieces? No. Too big or small? Yeah, too big. I mean, to me, that's less than a bite size. Okay, I chop it in half. This is bite size. <laughs> Why are you arguing about? I don't know if this is bite size. No, my mom said anytime it's kimchi, if you ever have to heat up kimchi, like mm -hmm. kimchi soup, uh, it kimchi, can be fresh. Yeah, it should be fermented. Now you're gonna need to get a bowl. Now you're gonna need one tablespoon sugar, sesame oil, and soy sauce, and oh, garlic. Got it. Get the pink tablespoon, do the two it, tablespoons it. of that. I got it, I got this. No, no, no. <laughs> you can't do that after I'm already here. We're gonna need one tablespoon of sugar. Honey, go get a tablespoon. You need to do some work too, boo-boo. One tablespoon sugar. One tablespoon garlic. One tablespoon soy sauce. One tablespoon sesame oil. Typically, I like to just add garlic, green onions, and kimchi. So I like just like the fresher kind, but nobody likes that. Like my mom doesn't like that. I'm the only one that likes that. Mm. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make like the proper version of what okay. I eat. Yeah. Right. Now I'm excited. Yeah. So normally when I make this, he doesn't eat it. He usually eats like some sort of soup or something on the side. But this one is just gonna be a lot more proper. So normally I wouldn't add like bread the paste. bread paste. Yeah, or the sesame oil or the soy sauce. I feel like it's a lot, but it's fine. It tastes really good. One teaspoon of this. Are you just sticking your fingers in there? Yeah. I just washed my hands. Oh. He opened the container and went like this and pulled out ginger <laughs> and threw so it in. I mean, honey, real chefs use their hands. That's <laughs> so disgusting. How do you I gotta go. Ra -ta -ta -ta. So now you have to drain the tofu and cut it into half and then stick it in and boil it for five minutes. And then you need to mix this. I'll mix. I also usually like either boil my tofu or sometimes I eat the tofu like just out after I drain it, which is really gross for a lot of people. Okay. This actually smells good for once. That's so rude. This is actually so freaking good. What you been doing this whole time? I like the other way better. I tried it. This is the original tubukin tea. Oh recipe. my god, this is please. so yummy. Tea bits of olive oil, and this is the tofu that is boiling. I think this is almost done. Olive oil. Do you think you have a better French accent, or do I? All of it wow, in the olive that oil. That looks so good. So normally I would just add it straight to the pan and like usually cut it over with scissors. But this is the proper recipe. I feel like if I did a what I eat in a day and not shown you guys the actual proper recipes and did everything my way, it, you guys wouldn't like it. I feel like you have to eat like the proper way first and then probably modify it into a way that fits your taste. So normally I grew up eating tuba kimchi and I would eat it like this because my mom cooks it like this. But then slowly I was like, okay, I don't really like the red pepper flakes. I don't really like the, um, the sesame oil. And then that's how it turned into what I I like to normally eat. This so. is beautiful. But it looks like. This is so beautiful. Yes, and then I think I'm gonna drink this. So, this is my first time trying it the proper way. Yes, I don't know if you're gonna like. 
like it. I think it's just my. I way. think I would love it. Honey. Wow. Okay, look at so, that. Explanation. My mom always made this because she didn't like me eating too much rice growing up, which is I think why I don't eat a lot of rice now that I'm older. You just grab a little bit of kimchi. You grab a tofu. I usually like to bring it to my plate, cut it in half with my chopsticks. Just like that, grab kimchi, and then you top. put it on top of the tofu, and then you eat it. How does it taste? Too much ginger. Why is it so spicy? Is it ginger? It's ginger. I'm so sorry. I feel like I just took a ginger shot. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my finger was a little heavy. <laughs> I said teaspoon! Sticking your fingers in there? <laughs> oh my god, I'm burning up. I feel like my Go back to my story and explain, right? My mom used to make tofu kimchi all of the time because when you eat just kimchi with rice, somehow it doesn't hit the same. Like, this is a whole ass dish in Korea, right? But on top of that, it's a lot more nutritious than eating rice. But this is one of those dishes where you don't need rice on the side. So then you eat tofu instead of rice, and that's how you get full, and it's a lot healthier for you than just eating white rice. I'm so upset. <laughs> Me too, I'm really upset by your teaspoon of ginger. Which was more of like a freaking teacup of ginger. <laughs> okay, I lesson mean. learned, don't add any ginger. <laughs> <laughs> lesson learned, maybe measure the ginger. What did you say? A chef's best tools are their hands. Maybe next time it's your brain. <laughs> that was a good one. I don't think I'll be eating much of this one for dinner, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. That's pretty much what I eat in a day. Typically, I will have, probably, I will skip either lunch or dinner depending because I'll be filming a mukbang which I will also insert into my life some app so today I didn't end up filming so I'm gonna leave a link in the description make sure to check out life some it's a free app or if you guys want to get the premium version which is the one that I've personally been using for so many months now and you guys actually get a 30% off discount code this is how I keep track of calories my macros this is probably the easiest thing that I found I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and let me know in the comments what do you guys think of the recipes have you guys eaten these things before or are they like just really random Korean recipes and and next time, don't add ginger bis. Ratatata, I'm out. <laughs>